I think corporate stuff leans more towards the let's be super energetic and happy. Uh, I, I did a project literally as the uh, sort of lockdown hit South Africa as well. And there was one little section where, where they kind of said, yeah, can we just change that up? It sounds a little doom and gloom. Sounds like the guy that we're talking about is dead. <laughs> and it's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean there. You know? <laughs> Hi, I'm Mark. And I'm Yaku. And welcome back to Department Spotlight. It's the show where we talk to our friends and colleagues about their experiences in the South African film industry. And today... We're back! We're back! I mean, we're still over Zoom with our friends and colleagues, but... We're back! <laughs> today we will be talking about music composing and film scoring with two of our friends and colleagues who have a lot of experience scoring for various different film, TV, advertisements, a lot of different projects. Alex actually scored music for four out of our recent short films. So let's get into it. My name is Dustin. I'm originally from uh, Johannesburg. I'm a composer based in Cape Town and I work at Fresh Cooker Studios. What's up guys? Uh, my name is Alex. I am a composer and I am a freelancer. So hit me up if you need any work done. Then leading on to that, sorry, I'm going to steal your question, but yeah, cool. um, <laughs> how do you manage a director who doesn't really know music or how to like convey things? I know Alex knows, um, we worked with Alex in a couple of our short forms recently, and how do you navigate a score when the director is not really sure how to phrase things or talk about music? Because mm, I know also with, with Alex is Yaku has some sort of musical theory background and I don't have any at all. So I feel like we communicate with Alex differently, but it's still interpreted by Alex. I feel like a lot of composers are incredible, like interpreters in terms of <laughs> taking in language and sort of transposing it into music. Yeah. It's like such an incredible the talent. Ones, yeah, like the good ones are, I guess the good composers are the best interpreters. I guess that's what the... Uh... Themes. Yeah, I think for me it's like um, like the reference tracks are like your babies. I think like if you can get them reference tracks and then hear like so when when they say like a lift or a rise, you wanna if you can get a reference track that can that can convey what the intangible is and kind of help you like navigate what palettes to use. I think so. Yeah, but I feel like um, it's there's no golden rule. With every with every client and director, it's just that's the that's like the nature of it. It's just and that's where the stress and fun comes at the same time. Just trying to decipher what their uh, uh, idea is of like like trying to convey all these intangible words into sound. Mm -hmm. That's like the, the biggest trick. Uh, I think also just to add on to that, it's um, you, you kind of, having worked as a composer, you kind of know already, okay, this is what this kind of scene needs needs to have. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you, you know, like there's maybe a couple different ways to look at this one scene. Um, all you need is for your director to tell you one keyword, um, which points in the direction that you need to go in. Um, and I think that's kind of, uh, at least I like to think that's where these really great people are really great at. Like Hans mm. Zimmer, you could probably yeah. tell Hans Zimmer like purple, and then he'll be <laughs> like, yes, I've got you. I've got you. I've got the theme. Yeah. I've got like a whole 30 minute theme written in my head. Yeah, you know, and that's, like, yeah, and that's essentially just like that's just time. I think the goal is just the more you compose, the better interpreter you become. I think that's kind of mm. like the, yeah, because you hear that story with Interstellar where um, Christopher Nolan just didn't want to give any reference. He was just like, let's make something new. I don't want it to sound like anything else. And then it's just like figure it out. Um, so and I mean, he obviously then the Interstellar soundtrack came out of that, and that thing is. Amazing. I only got like a but, one page outline, was it? Yeah, Something. yeah, of the full. I was just like, go. <laughs> I wanted to ask, Dustin was speaking about making music for games and then getting into the production company. So one of the things we have here is, what is the different considerations when it comes to score for film versus an advertisement versus a game versus- Corporate. Corporate versus sort of what, uh, 
how does the the thinking change from project to project? Um, I guess, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think. I know games, there's one thing that's the fundamental rule is that your composition should be able to loop in, indefinitely. And that's kind of like the main trick. So usually it's like um, the games that I usually work in is like eye gaming. So it's mainly uh, like gambling games or games like that. And then essentially like the main crux is that uh, the main team be 90 seconds and should loop. And then it should also, um, it should make space in the mix for sound effects. And then, um, so that's like the considerations that I, that I think about. And then other more like uh, narrative based games are more, um, the compositions are longer, but also they would like it to feel like an endless loop. So maybe the way it fades in, fades out should feel endless, but there's no like, it mustn't feel like I'm just constantly, it shouldn't constantly be going. And then I guess um, for ads, um, the the hardest ads I feel like um, are like the 30 second ones. So it's really hard to convey an idea in 30 seconds. Like the best time for me for, for ads is like a 45 second pitch. Cause that's like, you can kind of get a lot in there. It's like an, it's like an idea. And then for um, for like film, um, like I said, it's, it's it, it exists in a very much uh, subjective space. Like regardless if it's uh, corporate or um, something that's more creative, I feel like um, you have a lot more room to you know build a, a sonic world. I feel like I think that's probably like the main differentiating point is just like the length dictates how much you can maybe um, um, like expand musically. So. Uh, for instance, just like gaming, it's like uh, with the gambling games, there's not much space to really have depth. So you kind of like, if, if it's a theme, maybe it's like a like a, a theme that I've been recently doing, it's like a Maori theme, which is like the most, I've never written Maori Polynesian music before. But it's like, how do I convey that? So it's like, you have to have like something that can be like, oh, I'm in New Zealand or whatever. Whereas with like other, maybe if it was like a form bar, you wouldn't necessarily have to rely on those like stereotypical like uh, instruments or like sounds. To, like convey that you know there's a lot more like depth to it so it's, mm. it's just it's just like the amount of depth that you can put into the project i think that's what uh, differentiates it yeah alex your experience well just start with film i guess film is more about like the 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 story you know um is your is your music helping to tell the story of sort of the whole narrative going on um, and also you mentioned in the in the, the video game stuff that uh, it has to make space for um, sound effects, uh, whereas for film, your music always has to make space for the dialogue. Um, I, I guess that's kind of, I don't know, it's, uh, there's a lot to discuss when it, when it comes to how, how do you go about doing music for film. Um, and and the differences of film and sort of um, corporate kind of stuff. Um, I think corporate stuff leans more towards the let's be super energetic and happy, you know, um, where sometimes it's it gets really tricky because everything is down in the dumps and now you have to be like, hell yeah, let's do this, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, I, I did a project literally as the uh sort of lockdown hit south africa as well and there was one little section where where they kind of said yeah can we just change that up it sounds a little doom and gloom sounds like the guy that we're talking about is dead <laughs> and it's like oh yeah <laughs> yeah i see what you mean there you know <laughs> and it's a it's a corporate video it has to be like doots, 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 you know like let's yeah. let's let's get excited about this company yeah um I've never had the opportunity to do any video game stuff. Um, it sounds really cool uh, to 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 do that kind of stuff. I think for me, it's like I started off in video games, and then um, when I got into the company, I I kind of got this love for form. So I'm I'm leaning way more into scoring than I'm I'm moving away from uh, games. So I found that like it's the beauty of like just getting an edit and then just putting sound to it is like so awesome. It's like the like the like the turnover for like you get you're able to put down ideas. And then immediately see it work with but the problem with games is that you send something over the wall and then you wait a week and then you have to see it in a game and you're like you're like oh no you didn't implement it properly and you're like oh no this isn't working <laughs> you know what I mean? like so i think that for me that's what i love about uh, scoring to film it's just like the, the idea that you the like the immediate gratification of like you can write some music for a cue take a break come back and you can watch it and be like oh no this this works or oh no this is terrible what have i done 
that's why that's why I enjoy ballet. And that's it for this little extract of Department Spotlight focusing on music composing and film scoring. If you like that part and would like to listen to the full version of the podcast, we've left a link in the description for you to follow, but it's available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and everywhere else that you listen to your podcasts. So if you did like it, remember to smash that like button and doing all the other things that the YouTubers always tell you to do. Like, uh, also hitting that subscribe button that's uh, that's right down there and uh, while you're there you might as well hit the hit the notification bell you'll be notified of all the videos that we put out as soon as we put them out onto the world onto you the audience which is every Tuesday and every Friday with a new short film on the first Friday of every month so until next time go out there stay safe and make, make your, your movie, movie.